Why do you think silver is going to $300? Well, when I did the research and, uh, and wrote the book, I mean, some of it was even prior to writing the book, but uh, I've looked at multiple indicators and each time I, I look at these indicators and uh, the different, uh, I guess, inputs, um, I, I end up getting a $300 target. Uh, all these indicators tend to point to $300. Okay, please walk us through your rationale and your models. So um, I guess one of the most common and, and uh, best known and perhaps more e most understood is the gold-silver ratio. And uh, so it doesn't mean that silver has to go to $300 because of how the ratio might behave. Uh, but at least for me, it indicates the potential. So if you look at forecasts for silver prices, and so I'm not, uh, sorry, for gold prices. So I'm not the only one who thinks gold will go to ultimately 5,000 or even perhaps 10,000 in a speculative mania. Um, you've got people like Jim Rickards, Shane McGuire, who, uh, who ran a gold fund for the Texas uh, Retirement uh, Teachers Retirement System. You've got uh, Scott uh, Minard of uh, Guggenheim. And you've got um, the In Gold We Trust report that forecasts a uh, relatively easy forecast to close to 5,000 in gold and perhaps up to about 9,000, depending on how inflation plays out. So all that to say that if you take even $5,000 in gold, and you look at the, uh, the gold-silver ratio when the ratio bottomed in 1980, and uh, it, took, um, it took 15 ounces of silver to buy an ounce of gold. So based on that ratio, at $5,000 gold, you're looking at uh, $300 silver. Okay, so $300 silver. Let's talk about how we get there. But first and foremost, suppose we have $300 silver tomorrow. Let's just suppose it happens tomorrow. Right. A lot of silver investors, miners would be very happy, of course, but don't you see problems in our economy? A lot of industrial applications that need silver, they're not gonna be able to afford to put as much silver in their, in their batteries, in their solar panels. Um, and we're gonna probably see an industry-wide movement of thrifting, which is what we saw in 2011, when exactly. gold and other precious metals hit uh, then all-time highs. $300 silver sounds like a problem to me more than anything else. Can you, can you elaborate on that? You're right. I mean, I, I believe silver would get to that kind of level in a speculative uh, mania. And that uh, if you get there, <laughs> start selling because I wouldn't expect it to, to stay there um, and the stocks would explode. I wouldn't expect this, the stocks to stay there either at uh, $300 silver. And you're right. Um, it would be uh, detrimental, uh, uh, very detrimental, in fact, for the industrial applications because uh, silver has become irreplaceable in so many ways in industry. So uh, to have to pay that kind of money for, uh, for silver, uh, it's true that in many of those applications, it's very, very small amounts of silver. Right. So there's a, there's a fair bit of tolerance in terms of the price they'll pay to, to, for the silver that goes into those applications, but it still would wreak havoc. There's no question. Okay. The question is when? When can silver reach $300? So uh, realistically, I think, you know, you're going to have to look out five to 10 years. These things always take longer. And I know, uh, like you said at the beginning, people are, uh, are impatient. We're tired of being patient. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, then you shouldn't be in this game. It's not, it's not for you. It's not the place for you. Uh, you know, people complain about $22 silver, but you had plenty of time to buy silver at $15 in 2018 and 2019. It was hovering at 15 for almost a couple of years. We're over 40% above that right now. Um, you know, no complaints for me in, in, that, uh, in that respect. But well, you're talking about a more than 10 times increase. Has that happened in silver's history? Silver was up 3,700% in the 1970s. It started out at $1.30 in uh, 1971 and peaked at $50. Okay. So at that, you know, versus gold, that did a 1,400% return. So silver more than doubled gold's return. So there is a precedent of- Most definitely. Something like this happening. I'm curious as to why we never breached the 1980 highs, Peter. Uh, you know- the 40 uh, years? Right, that's a good question as well. It's, you know, it got, it got to 49 in uh, 2011, and that was uh, somewhat of a speculative uh, mania as well. And it sold off pretty quickly, but, um, it's, uh, silver just behaves like that. It goes through long periods of consolidation, uh, trading sideways. You know, it, it ran to $30 in August of uh, 2020. And then since then, it's been in a range between about 21 and 29. Okay, so Peter, uh, nobody has a crystal ball. You, you don't know exactly when $300 is gonna hit. Let's do some brainstorming together then. So in the 70s, it took how long for a dollar silver to reach uh, then all-time highs? 10 years. 10 years. Can we reasonably assume 
a 10x increase over the next 10 to 15 years? I would say yes, absolutely. Okay. There, if, even if it doesn't stay there, I think that uh, the odds of some kind of, uh, of, a, of a bubble is, is very likely. It's very difficult to make predictions 10 years out, and who knows what the sure. world's going to look like in 10, 15 exactly. years. I, I do have a question for you. Why do you expect the silver to gold ratio to hold 10 to 15 years out? I mean, let's assume that it does. Uh, wh you're assuming there's no external forces that would push the ratio to par, would cause the two metals to diverge, right? What are these assumptions you're making? So the ratio is at 82 right now. If you look over the last, uh, say, 20, 30 years, it's averaged about 55 to 60. So we're already considerably above the average. Um, you know, again, there's nothing that says it has to go back down, but uh, if you just look at how it has behaved, that's a, a strong indicator of where silver is likely to trade relative to gold. So, uh, so the odds are that the ratio will come back down at least to say 50, 55 to 60. That's a reasonable target. And then it, again, in a speculative mania, um, I don't see why it wouldn't go back to down to 15. I want to ask you why you think uh, gold and silver have been sort of diverging this year. Now, gold is up 1% on the year. Uh, we're speaking today on Tuesday. It's going to probably change by the time we hear this interview. But right. silver has been down about right. 6 7%. The exactly. point being, gold has been flat, held its own against other assets falling down. Uh, silver, not so much. Why the discrepancy here? So 54% of silver goes to industry. And uh, my view is the market's, uh, you know, looking at the, the risk of recession yeah. and how that might affect the, the demand for silver over the next, say, six to 12 months or so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, that being a big part of silver's uh, uses, uh, industry, solar panels, electronics, electrical, uh, EVs, medicine, uh, medical applications, equipment and so on. So uh, I think the market's sort of pricing that in and, and it's pressuring, keeping uh, pressure on silver. Okay. Um $5,000 gold. I didn't forget this. <laughs> Let's revisit that uh, assumption. So you said earlier that, again, depending on where the gold-silver ratio is in 10, 15 years, uh, we could see $300 silver, all depending on where gold goes. Uh, you're assuming, of course, that gold and silver, again, the ratio stays constant, that they move in tandem. Great. But let's revisit the $5,000 uh, to even $10,000 uh, gold call. Uh, $5,000, first of all, is not a significant increase from here. I mean, it's, it's 2x, it's not 10x right. or anything crazy. Right. We've seen more than 2x increases in gold in exactly. several times in history. That's right. So it's not impossible, but let, let, let's go to the more extreme end of your range, $10,000. What's your thesis there? My, my thesis is that um, if you look at what's happening with inflation, and if you look at uh, how uh, other assets are, um, are hurting, in fact, uh, since the start of the year, uh, gold is, let's say, essentially flat. So anyone holding physical gold is a winner right now. If you look at that versus stocks, bonds that are down 20%, commodities as a whole since the start of the year have exploded. They're up 44%. Yeah. So uh, gold and, and uh, silver are both commodities. And so uh, the trading commodities is indicative of where uh, silver and gold are likely headed. 